Tucson, Arizona, a city of over half a million people lying in a low desert valley. All of those people dependent on air conditioning to get through the brutally hot summer. My great grandparents moved here in the teens and 20s when luxuries like air conditioning were only available to the wealthy. How did people survive the summers back in those days? One of the things that made life livable to people in those times was the cool water that they drank from large earthenware vessels called Oyas. On the Border with Crook, a book published in 1891 about life in territorial Arizona says this, my readers must not expect me to mention ice or fruits. I am not describing Delmonico's. I am writing of old Camp Grant and I am painting the old hole in the most rosy colors I can employ. Ice was unheard of, and no matter how high the mercury climbed or how stifling might be the Sirocco from Sonora, the best we could do was to cool water by evaporation in ollas of earthenware manufactured by the Papago Indians living in the ruined missions of San Javier above Tucson. The Tucson Citizen, a newspaper from Tucson from back in the day, said, there is nothing quite like an Oya to keep water cool on warm summer days. They save ice, and where ice is not to be had are a great blessing. The Commissioner of Indian Affairs in 1898 said this, The women manufacture these earthen water jugs, called in this country and Mexico, Oyas, and other small articles of clay like pitchers and kitchen utensils. Years ago, the Oyas made by these Papago Indians were much in demand because on account of their porousness, they keep the water quite cool even during the hot season. But since the establishment of ice manufactories in Tucson, the demand for said water jugs has been steadily on the decrease. The periodical The Clay Worker in 1926 said this, The Oya was a necessary receptacle for keeping drinking water in the early mission days. While today the Oya is finding an increased popularity in warmer climates for keeping drinking water cool and fresh. Because of the porous nature of the clay jar, which is unglazed, the water within will slowly seep out through the pores and the warm air outside causes evaporation. This circulation and evaporation keeps the walls of the jar cool and the water inside lowers in temperature and becomes excellent for drinking. Small two or five gallon jars are a common sight through the country districts of California where the jars hang under a shady orange or umbrella tree in the summer days. So I made myself an Oya and I filled it with water and it's been sitting out here for a couple hours with water in it, keeping cool in this hot summer weather we're having. So let me take you back now and show you how I made this jar. And then when that's done, come back here and I'll run some comparisons between the cool water in this Oya and water in an ordinary plastic pitcher. And we can get an idea of just how much cooler the water in this Oya is. If you're hoping to follow along, the tools you're gonna need are a lump of clay, a large pookie, a rib tool, a smooth stone, a blade of some sort, and a scraping tool. First, I started out by patting out a slab of clay. Then I set that slab into my pookie or my base mold and I just press it down and then start pinching the edges up into a vertical wall. Then I use my blade to trim that down so that it's all even and ready to add my first coil. Then I use my gourd rib tool just to smooth out the inside and press it down into that mold firmly. And now I'm rolling out my first coil, place it on top of the wall and start pinching down with that bonding pinch to connect it and then pinch that coil thinner and using my gourd rib to smooth it on the inside and the outside. I'm gonna just pinch that in a little bit to give me that rounded shape I'm looking for and then I'll be ready to add my next coil. Placing that coil on top Again, bonding it to the base and then pinching it thinner. Scrape it smooth on the inside and the outside. And then I'll be ready to let this rest a little bit and firm up before I add more coils. Okay, it's been about an hour or so and the pot has firmed up, so I'm ready to keep building. This will be my third coil. This will form the shoulder of the jar. So again, bonding it to the base, pinching it thinner, scraping it smooth on the outside and on the inside. Just working on the shape a little bit before it gets too firm. 
And this will be my last coil. This will form the rim. And so I'm doing a little special pinch here that will create an out flared rim. And here I am scraping it smooth on the outside and the inside, and then just using my wet fingers to smooth that rim into a nice, even rim. And it's ready to let it rest and firm up a little bit more. Here we are about an hour or so later, and I'm ready to pop it out of the pookie now that it's dried a little bit. And you can see where it was in the pookie, it's kind of crusty and it's got a little bit of a ridge. So I'll just use that deer rib to scrape that ridge down, scrape down any high points, and then use little bits of wet clay to press in any low spots that are in there as well. And then just making sure the inside is nice and smooth, making it all nice and smooth, and then letting it rest some more. Now here we are an hour or so later, and I'm ready to set it on the rim now that it's firm enough, and I'm just gonna clean up the bottom using that deer rib again, just to scrape down and smooth the bottom, and then doing the same thing on the rest of the pot. And now I'm ready to start stone smoothing. This is using a wet stone all over the pot to just kind of smooth it out, press those little bits of temper down into the clay body. This is the final step on smoothing the outside. And since this pot won't be decorated, this is the final treatment before I allow it to dry. Once the pot is fully dry, I take it out into the country to fire it in an open fire. So I've built up a bed of coals and I'm just going to place the pot on some stones over those coals to allow good air circulation around it. And this is mesquite wood, so I'm stacking a good layer of mesquite wood around all the pots. And then once I've got enough fuel stacked around it, I'll go ahead and light it off and let it burn down to coals. Once all that fuel has burned down to mostly ash and coals, it's time to start pulling those coals away so the pots can start cooling. Once the pots have had a chance to cool a little bit, I'll just start pulling them out. The reason I'm not just reaching in with my glove and grabbing them is that it'll leave a dark spot every place I touch it with that leather glove. So I'm careful at this point to only touch it with something metal, which is not gonna leave a carbon spot on the hot pottery. Here's an example of what I was talking about. So the pot rolls over onto some plants and you can see that piece of plant stuck on it. And I pop it off and there's a black carbon spot that is left from that little piece of plant that sat on it for just a minute. So at this point, the pots are all just about ready to pack up and head home. So the capacity for my Oya here is about three and a half quarts. It could be larger. Some of the historic Oyas we looked at were quite a bit larger than this. But for this experiment, this is certainly all we need. About two hours ago, I put three quarts of water in this Oya, and I put three quarts of water in this plastic pitcher. The water for both of these came out of the same tap, and they've both been sitting out here on this hot porch in July for about two hours. So to begin with, let me use my infrared thermometer and just measure the temperature in each of these containers. Twenty six point one degrees in the Oya. Thirty two point four in the pitcher. So just in the matter of two hours, the water in this Oya is six degrees Celsius cooler than the water in this plastic pitcher. Perhaps if it was a much larger Oya and the water was left in it day and night, it would be even more than six degrees cooler. Definitely refreshingly cool. It's not as cool as water from a refrigerator, obviously, but Back in those days before the refrigeration, people were just glad to have something cool to drink as opposed to lukewarm water, which this is not. Water like this kept in earthenware vessels had been keeping people around Tucson cool in the summertime for centuries. Certainly since earthenware started to be made here around 200 AD. 
can really appreciate how they got through summer with nice cool water from earthenware jars like this. If you'd like to learn more about the use of earthenware in everyday life, specifically about cooking in earthenware, then you're going to want to check out this video right over here where I make a cooking pot and then cook some soup in it on my stove. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.